dedicatedly study just AMC or were you working along with it? That experience does help while preparing for AMC exam, especially the MCQ. Did you attend live classes or did you go for the recorded ones? I did, I did attend both live classes. Hello everyone, good evening. I'm Dr. Snigda Sharma from Academically and today we are here with one more successful candidate. So let's welcome Dr. Raghul Vignesh, who has recently cleared his AMC MCQ CAP exam. So Dr. Raghul, heartiest congratulations. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sindhya. Oh, thank you. Quite a journey. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I think they started back in uh, back in April with the course of academic year. Since then it's been around four, five months. So it's been quite a journey. Okay, so uh, would you say like you were saying you started in April, did you dedicatedly study just AMC or were you working along with it? Uh, I took a sabbatical leave from work. I was working actually in a, in a, in a hospital setup, but um, mm -hmm. the, the, the consultants were kind enough to grant me a few sabbatical leaves in order to pursue the AMC exam approach. So, okay. so I was lucky in that print, but I did take a break in order to study for AMC. Yeah. So, okay, so uh, just to get an idea, when did you graduate? Uh, I graduated in October 2021. Yeah. So, it's been okay. Two years. so you, you have a good clinical experience, you would say, right? Yeah, ever since I graduated, I, I started working as a junior resident in a, in a multi specialty hospital. So, yeah, I would okay. say it's around three years of experience with internship. Yeah. Okay, but would you say that that experience does help while preparing for AMC exam, especially the MCQ? Yeah, definitely it does. I mean, most of the questions uh, in AMC is clinical based scenarios. So it would really okay. help if you have a year's experience just to just to know the hospital work, the day to day things. So that, that forms your basic foundation. So you know the concepts that I got from work experience. So definitely it's an added advantage. Okay, so you did take a sabbatical, but did you start preparing before you were April or you started it during April? How did yeah, Alex this is, is, Sure, yeah. I, I initially, this is my uh, second attempt giving the AMC okay. exam. So I was a bit, okay. uh, I didn't know the whole process. I didn't have a proper coaching guidance as such before uh, during my first attempt. My first attempt okay. was in November 2023. And uh, mm -hmm. I had no clues about uh, recall question, uh, getting those uh, MCQs, uh, repeated MCQs software and all that. So it was a bit of all over the place. So I wasn't very sure about how to approach the exam as such. So that's when I decided okay. during to give my second attempt, I need a proper uh, guidance, you know, a set, set number of people to coach me and guide me through what are the niggles to the games exam. So yeah, that's one thing. So I've been preparing since uh, August 2023, yeah, almost a year. Okay, but then how did you come to know about academically? I mean, Facebook, Instagram, or through a friend? How? Now, I came through a Facebook uh, advertisement, and then I had my own research about uh, academically. I visited their websites, and I saw, I read a few reviews as well. And okay. uh, based on that, I had decided, okay, let me join, and uh, I, I, that's how it started with academically. I would say thank you for joining us. But okay, next question. Uh, did you mm -hmm. attend live classes or did you go for the recorded ones? And how did you go about attempting the mocks that we have given on our website? And even yeah, the same session? I did I did attend both live classes. A few classes I, I did miss out and it was very helpful that I had the recorded sessions in hand. So it was okay. a mix of both, but ninety percent I, I because I took a sabbatical move, so I yes, was able to attend the live. Mm -hmm. And the mock exams where uh, I did uh, around six to seven mock exams uh, from uh, academic mm -hmm. week. Uh, okay. It was it was really good in the sense that most of the questions it designed in the mock were from previous month week or questions. So it, it, it also tested about the topics that were repeated as such uh, during the previous exam months. So, so it, it had a good approach. That's where you are telling us that for students who are appearing in like September, October and November, Please focus on recalls, I would say. Like, we have been telling everyone to focus on recalls. 
yeah definitely especially the the same months we got in the beginning exam in october the, the recalls that we're going to get from credible uh, source uh, during the same exam week is very important but of course we have to have a good foundation before uh, that's also that's that's all that's a safety net you know before focusing yeah. on recalls so we need to make yeah. sure both okay so like we have met in open forums that we conduct for our students uh, once a month and mm-hmm. like i a lot of and as you might have seen that a lot of students have a question how many hours a day should be invested so considering you have prepared and given this whole exam and sat for 5 hours like focused uh, how mm-hmm. many hours a day were you given for mc and how many hours theory and how many hours for your mocks and questions So overall, since I took a break from work, I was able to give around, on an average, I would say around six to seven hours a day, uh, on an average. But uh, during the final, sorry, that's really good. Like six to seven hours yeah. is really good. Yeah, I mean, maintaining six to seven hours on a very consistent level will be sufficient time. Uh, it's a good enough time, and uh, okay. I think the duration of the live classes were also uh, two hours included. So I'm including the class mm-hmm. into the six hours as well. So because I, I can apparently okay. ask this for instance, it was a live session. I, I got my doubts there, so I did include that also during as my uh, you know a, a study uh, session. So mm-hmm. overall, yeah, six to seven hours would be a fair amount, I suppose. So, but it might vary subjectively. It depends on how the speed is, how we can, uh, how good we are able to recollect everything. It might decrease or increase. It's a very subjective thing. Okay. okay. And how many questions a day were you attempting on an average? So I I was reading like if suppose I read a topic of let's say obstetrics I would like to at least complete around fifty to seventy five questions in in that topic that I've completed. So it's like you read a topic, do some MCQs. The academically approach was they had MCQs dedicated for each subject separately. It's not a mixture. Yes. So I was able to okay. read a subject, complete a lecture, and then get back to the MCQs. And I just I was just testing my knowledge on that. So. It was a the user interface was good. I mean, that's how I approached it initially. Thank you, thank you for that appreciation. Uh, so, uh, how would you say uh, which topics, like the lectures that we say they are high yield lectures? We are not covering everything, and a lot of students yes. sometimes complain that you are not covering all the topics. Would you say that the material provided was enough, or should uh, people use more reference books? I mean, I would definitely say to have a, an extensive output for AMC because AMC assets, the system doesn't provide us with any materials. It's all guidelines, it's all websites, it's all yes. everything. So yes. the more extensive we are about it, it's better always. So again, uh, academically has a very good sort of uh, a concise fashion. They have everything like, from therapeutic guidelines to good source. They have that. Mm-hmm. They have John Booker in the slides. They have uh, you know R C H and P H. So it's a mix of everything, and it is reasonably. I would say has a good basis, but of course, for topics that you need more extensive knowledge, it is good for you to you know have an extensive outlook about the other guidelines available outside the academic source as well. So it's good to have things, and that's where uh, studying in, in a group can really help. Like people can help out with you know you might have yeah. a guideline that I might have missed out, so I can provide you with that. So yes, in that way, it's good to have an extensive group and you know set an outlook that is more broader. Than having limited work time, but academically has a concern. No? If you want more knowledge, you can you can still have a outlook about it somewhere. Yes, but when you're studying in a group, one person always has strength of one subject, and another person has a strength in another subject. So it always helps to study in a group and getting connected, Definitely. whatever way, WhatsApp or Definitely. Discord. Yeah, I think that really helps. So yeah. uh, I, I hear you. you Plan to apply for jobs after AMC one half. Correct. I am just trying to get my visa process sorted uh, at the moment, and uh, after this, I have to apply for the Arbu campaigns. Are going to start from the end of September. Uh, yes. Yes. And I think it's varying state wise from one month. Campaign dates yes. are varying from one month. Yeah. I have to finally get my CV done and start applying for jobs. Yes, but as we promised, uh, we will have a specialized one-on-one session with one of our AEC qualified faculties who are working okay. in Australia. We'll plan yeah. it in. <laughs> we'll probably try and plan it in next week. 
like next week but because we have to get a time slot with the faculty and regarding cv uh, our ceo dr akram he has guided you over two days back and yeah. he will guide you any issue how to go on about it but yes Perfect. chan we recently have a few alumni groups that we have formed for all our past uh, amc year candidates and you can get connected to them as well i mean we are trying to form our network to help each other Sure. Yeah. That's that's more about it, right? Because the journey is a bit of a they're entering into an unknown territory. So the more the networking, the more uh, you reach out and help on each other. I think it's gonna be useful. So yeah, I, I did have a very good set of people that I studied with, and yeah. I am gonna continue my journey with uh, all of them. It's it's, it's, uh, it's it's about helping out each other. And I feel uh, that's how we can also sustain during this uh, AMC journey as well. And I would say, like clearing AMC one is just the start. There's a yeah, long, yeah. there's a long road ahead of you. Yep, yep. So that's why it 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 can't be very intense and just you know. Uh, yeah. Even for preparing, it's not going to help, and even for the entire journey as such, it's good to have a good set of people around you, good set of uh, study group. Yes, and some like working is very important. Like every time the faculties and everyone really suggests. networking linkedin whatsapp wherever sources just meet people say hi hello just smile at them the british way just say hello because you know that yeah yeah that's true that's true so that's why i i also want to step into the australian side and get to do some few uh, visit a few hospitals do some walk in interviews and if possible and get a few networking from uh, from australia i would say so So let's see. Hopefully the visa process all gets sorted. I have to start the next paperwork. So that's yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, sometimes they say it's hard to get a level one supervision immediately after AMC one. Yeah. But yeah. there are people who do succeed with their strong CV, and considering you have a lot of experience. Mm-hmm. And if, I hope it's more. Is it more than three years? Just asking for knowledge, general. Oh uh, no, it has been three years now, including internship. Yeah. Okay. Fairly, so you- Yeah, so that you have very good chance because it's a very good experience to get at least level one supervision. That would be really good if we get to know in a month or something that oh, Dr. Raghu got a level one supervision job. Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> Let's not jinx it right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, in the preparation, just another question. I think a lot of people. Uh, keep asking how many times should we go through blue book or red book or John Murtha? Mm-hmm. How many times should you go through that? Uh, the handbook, since I had given it, uh, given the exam twice, it will mean the entire one year of prep average. I, I went through the AMC handbook around three times, and mm-hmm. the red book was recently updated. So it's not essential to go through the entire red book as well. Just yes. the guidelines. Even John Murtha, uh, academically, has, has done a good job. Put in John Mota as much as possible inside the slides itself. So you yes. don't need to go back to the uh, John Mota PDF and do a uh, separate revision over there. So if you are doing some pediatrics or dermatology, some of the John Mota's uh, important uh, uh, triads and all those important yes. points are jotted into the slides itself. So overall, they have done a you know good job of concising both together. But yeah, I think handbook is a must. Uh, a few guidelines have been changed during the recent times. So I can't fully rely on. I'll just pick only three or four questions: uh, colorectal cancer screening, and all those. The guidelines have recently been updated. Yes. But overall, for the image-based questions and all the picture-based questions, they are taking the uh, handbook images as the base reference. They, I think, a few of those images are also in the exam form when I when I gave it. So mm-hmm. It's good to definitely give it uh, at least uh, one series is compulsory. Um, okay. Yeah, that should be. Okay. So, any recalls or any important subjects that you remember from your own exam that you would suggest for? Because a lot of students from our own faculty, like group, they are there in September, October, and November. So, any okay. important topics that you would like to suggest for them to go through in last fifteen days that you found important and were there in your exam? Uh, so, for some OBGY, I would say preeclampsia, tissue of the bone, mm-hmm. um, gentle management of osteoporosis, and post menopause treatments. Psychiatry is a fair amount of uh, stigma. Yeah. The drugs in psychiatry is quite important. Okay. Uh, community health. They had a bit of a forest clause for that. It's almost standard in all exams. Wow. Because medicine and surgery, as such, many people can. I feel uh, they can have uh, a good 
information, giving the right sort of answer because they have been able to do it. It's basic science that they did it in their final year. But yeah. I think guidance are different in OBGYN, pediatrics, and uh, psychiatry in Australia. So yes. the guidance would differ. So it's better to give a extensive read on these guidelines for, for these three subjects. And also, it's the most weighted uh, subjects as well. Uh, yes. Pediatric, pediatric, psychiatry. So I think putting the focus on these three quite more than general medicine and surgery will be useful. Mm. Okay. And I'm like. Ones, okay. You are so about recalls right now. I think I would just anyone who asks me this, I would like go through fifteen days of recall. Go through fifteen days of recall. Yeah, I mean, it gives you an idea in the sense of uh, you know the topics. Of, the question that you ask yeah. me is what are the topics that are important. Yeah. So when you go to the previous three months of recalls, you would get the sense of what what are the important topics they're asking to me. Yeah, yeah. And okay. how are they asking the question? How are they framing the question? So another thing that's the benefit mm-hmm. of it. It gives you a subjective idea of okay, this is how I'm going to be tested in the exam. So that's so why it's more important. Questions they might not be similar, but they're somewhere around those topics, right? Or are they similar? Correct. It's more that? like if they are asking about osteoporosis, how mm-hmm. are the types they can ask the question? Okay. Get to know the concept better. That's what say. yes. But again, you you can get to know what are the concepts they're testing on. So yes. So that maybe because will be beneficial. Okay. So, any advice for people who are taking it next year in February or March? I mean, if I can do it, anybody can. So, everybody has doctors at this point. So, it's, it's really a matter of uh, just doing the right, uh, smart work. You know, just get get the recall sorted. Get a few. Mm. Get a good study group. Anybody, it's it's a very doable exam. If you, uh, okay. Uh, for people who have not been cleared, like, even I, this is my second attempt. Even I was able to clear it. So. Uh, things will eventually change out. You just have to change out a bit of your planning. So definitely, just keep your shot at it. I think you're gonna hit the ball very soon. So just keep going, guys. Right? Everyone can achieve. It. Thank you so much, Dr. Rahul. Thank you so Thank much you. for this, for Thanks giving so this time, Thanks. and congratulations once again. Thank we you. will Thank get you. connected soon for further process and helping you with the CV and if we can with the visa process. And most probably we'll see you back with us for AMC two preparation. So I think when the classes go live for uh, yes, we are planning to make them go live by end of November. Oh, perfect, sure. Think, uh, so because yeah. in December and January kind of are off for the Australian Medical Council, so yeah. the next session will start in January. Sorry, February. Oh. So we are planning to begin it in November so that you all have good amount of time. And it said if you are done with AMC one, if your concepts are clear. AMC two doesn't need more than three months. That's what most of the alumni have been saying. So we are mm-hmm. hoping that stands good, and we hope to get you back. Congratulations mm-hmm. once again, and thank you. Thank you for thank your time. You. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Karen, for being here. Thank you. Thank you.